Well, amen. How many are ready to receive something from God today? It's a couple of you. That's awesome. Well, listen, I just want to, before we invite Gary up, I uh, just wanted to, for those of you maybe are newer uh, to the Christian life or newer to church, I uh, just want to explain something briefly here. You know, in, in uh, Jesus gave gifts to the church, and, and he's given us ministers, those who are called by God to bring ministry to the body of Christ. But I want you to know there's five flavors. Say five flavors. Okay, so I'm going to start with this, the pointing finger, which is this finger, right? Point at your neighbor, okay? Say, so straighten out. Okay. So this represents the, the prophetic ministry. And you know what? How, how many have ever had a GPS on your car and you're driving down the road and you make a wrong turn? What does your GPS say? Recalculate. And so God's brought the five-fold ministry. The flavor of prophet is to, to come sometimes and say, the church, you guys need to recalculate, right? We've got to come back you know, come back in line, okay? So this is um, the ministry of the prophetic. So that's this finger. Now, then there's the middle finger. Um, I don't want to put that finger up, but the middle finger, uh, it usually stretches the furthest on your hand, right? That's the, 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 the ministry of the evangelist is to go out and reach the community, bring people to Christ, but it's also to train and equip the body of Christ to do evangelism. And the prophet trains and equips the body of Christ to be prophetic and to speak words to people. Okay, does that make sense? And then, of course, you have the pastor is where the, the, wedding, the wedding ring goes. That means you're married to the church and you're loving and taking care of the church, and that's what the pastor does, and that's the flavor. And the little finger, if you're into cleaning your ear, that's the finger you use, right? And that represents the gift of the teacher. Teachers are very repetitive. Teachers are always, you know, you, you know, we got to do this right. The Bible says this. And we have, so we need five flavors. Say five flavors. So we're really blessed today because we have uh, Pastor Gary. And we also have Pastor Paul here as well. He's an amazing man of God as well. So let's give them a hand. And... Um, they both have great servant hearts. They have yeah. the, the same DNA that we have. We, we believe in servant leadership. They're here to serve us today. We'll get to that. It's coming. Uh, uh, they're here to serve us with their gift today. And, and Gary, Gary's been a friend of ours and a friend of this church for a while now. And we're just really blessed to have you. Now, I want to say this tonight, okay, for time reasons today. We, there, he's got a few people you're going to prophesy over this morning. And we'll see how the spirit leads. It might go further. But tonight, there's going to be like a deeper night. It's going to be worship. Very short word, probably. And then just a lot of ministry. For those of who want to go deeper, let me see your hands, okay? So come tonight. Just come expecting tonight for a, a touch of God. And uh, there's child care available, Pastor Jeremy said. So if you have, uh, it's up to age 12. So if you have kids and you want to come, bring your kids. Uh, you know, they'll be cranky tomorrow morning when you're getting them up to put them on the bus, but it's all good. Um, so come tonight, okay? So who's coming tonight? Let's see your hands. whole bunch of you. Great. That's awesome. Okay. Um, so that's basically it. I think I'm just going to let you come, Gary, and just share what God's put on your heart, brother. Well, good morning. It's wonderful to be with you guys. Um, I really feel like I'm part of the family. Could you invite me in the summer, though? It's always the winter. You and Cameron. I tell you, it's wonderful. I, I'm, I'm really delighted to be here. I, I apologize. My wife, um, her mother passed away. We were supposed to be here in January, and her mother passed away. And you guys were so gracious to, um, you know, to let us uh, bow out for that weekend. Uh, she's with the Lord. Amen? Yes. We have great hope. Uh, it, the Bible says we don't, uh, we don't um, uh, you know, weep or... Um, mourn without those who have hope. Amen. We will see them in the, uh, as the Bible says, or the song says, the sweet by and by. Amen. Um, you know what? I had a message that I was coming to preach to you today, but as we were worshiping, I felt like the Lord dropped another thought in my heart. So I want to preach that to you. So if you have your Bibles or your phones, would you turn to Isaiah chapter 54? Isaiah chapter 54. We're going to look at a couple of verses here this morning. I really believe that every church, doesn't matter where that church is, it doesn't matter how many people are in that church, when two or three are gathered and Jesus is in the midst, there's a power that can be ignited. And every church has the opportunity to affect their region, to affect their city or their town, and actually to affect the world. Amen, Gary. Good point. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, I'll just encourage myself. But listen, the truth of the matter is, you can be a world-impacting 
church. Amen. Come on, I want you to say amen. amen. All right, listen, this is, this is not a spectator sport this morning. This is actually, you get to participate. So I want to tell you, listen, God wants you to impact your world. I, I don't say this lightly. I just got back from Taiwan on Sunday night. Friday, I leave for Scotland, and I go to Scotland, England, Scotland, and Wales. Then, literally, we come home, and we go to um, Singapore, then we go to Australia, and then we go to Singapore, and then we come home. Then we go to Winkler, Manitoba, and then Alberta. I think I'm off for a week, and then we go back to Asia. Now, listen, I'm here this Sunday. You're investing in me. You're actually getting the results that I'm getting. You've, you've partnered with me in that sense, right? That we're working together. You've invited me in. I'm training you. You've invited me in. You're bearing the fruit of impacting the world too. Listen, last, just last week, Last week, 76 people got saved. 76 people. And so, you know, we've been friends for a number of years now. And I know a number of you are praying for me. And, and you have sown into my life. And so I just want to say, hey, well done. You're getting the benefits too. Come on. Your, your finances have come into my ministry, and as a result, I get to go to the world. So even though maybe I'm not your missionary, I am your missionary in that sense. Come on, you can impact the world. So let's look at the scripture, Isaiah chapter 54. I don't know what version you've got in there. Okay, New King James. So it says this, Enlarge the place of your tent, and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not spare. Lengthen your cords. Strengthen your stakes. For you shall expand to the right and to the left, and your descendants will inherit the nations and make desolate cities inhabited. Come on, say amen to that. Now, let me read it to you from the message version, because I'm going to pull from both these versions. It says this, clear lots of ground for your tents. Make your tents large. Say large. large. Come on. It says spread out. Then it says think big. This is what the message version says. Think big. Use plenty of rope. Drive the tent pegs deep. You're going to need lots of elbow room for your growing family. You're going to take over whole nations. You're going to, re to resettle abandoned cities. Don't be afraid. You're not going to be embarrassed. Don't hold back. You're not going to come up short. Come on. That's an amazing scripture. I changed the ministry of my name, uh, my, my ministry name this year. I went from Speak Life Canada primarily because I wasn't spending a lot, enough time in Canada. And uh, I just felt like the Lord said, Gary, go, I want, you're going global. So I changed my ministry name to Speak Life Global. And my goal, uh, to be honest with you, is to select seven nations. I've already got about four or five and then some missions nations where I'm literally going to spend a month in those nations that nation, and pour my life into that nation to raise up a prophetic company of people. Canada is obviously one of those nations, but my, my desire is to partner with churches, partner with ministries. So I'm actually partnering with some of the largest churches in the nations that I go to. One movement that I'm partnering with, they've asked me actually to step onto their apostolic board, is a church that has over 3,300 churches across the world. One church I go to has 13,000 people in it with 660 churches that they planted. They have a ministry called Asia for Jesus where literally they go all around Asia worshiping, creating worship events, preaching the gospel. Now, now listen, I'm a guy from Hamilton. Does anybody know where Hamilton is? See, when I ask that question in Asia, there's crickets in the room. Nobody knows where Hamilton is. But I'm a guy from Hamilton who now God has expanded his reach to be able to go into these places and churches that I would never have thought of. I've never have thought of. Listen, God calls all of us to believe him for something bigger than we could ever imagine. What are you dreaming for? Listen, are you just dreaming for that new boat? Some of those guys are, you're touching my, you know, 
I'm not, I say it's okay to dream for a new bowl, but listen, let's, let's dream for big things. That God actually wants to expand you guys. Like I'm looking around, there's not many chairs available here. Are, are we believing God that maybe God wants to expand us a little bit more? Amen, Amen Gary, good point, hallelujah. So look, historically... Historically, this passage deals with really the restoration of Israel under Darius. Darius was a king. He was a foreign king. And really, it was God's challenge and promise to Israel, if we want to do the context properly. The Babylonian exile and the, capacity, uh, and the captivity meant more than the oppression for Israel. It meant shame. It meant disgrace. It meant humiliation. And so here, God promises a glorious release from not only the exile and the captivity, but also from shame, disgrace, and humiliation. He's about to bless them, and he's about to release them. And so Isaiah prophesies into the future where they're currently going into exile. They're going into 70 years of exile. And Isaiah begins to prophesy, and he begins to say, Hey, look, do not fear. You will not be ashamed. Come on, think bigger. It's, it's very difficult sometimes when you're in the midst of a tough situation to begin to think bigger. But it's in those situations that God calls you to think bigger. It's in those situations that God calls you to expand. The enemy wants to contract you. The enemy wants to push you and limit you. I'm not, I'm not talking to anybody here this morning. Listen, what I have found in my life is that the moments when I feel the pressure of the enemy, what I have to do is I have to expand. I have to push back. Come on, I have to say, no way. I'm not going to let that limitation thinking get on my life. I'm not going to let the enemy kind of hold me back. I'm actually going to think bigger than even what my world is right now. Come on, what's your world right now? Ask God to stretch you a little bit. Ask God to enlarge you a little bit. Listen, prophetically, prophetically, God was now saying the game has now changed. Come on. It's, new. it's a new day. It's a new way of thinking. And everyone, listen, when Jesus gets involved, things begin to change. I can tell you as a young man when I was 18, actually 17, I was messed up, all that stuff, doing drugs, doing alcohol every weekend. You know, I basically I stoned every day during the week and then drunk and stoned on the weekend. I mean, literally, I was just a messed up kid. But when Jesus came into my life, I'm telling you, my life changed. I mean, I went from smoking two packs of cigarettes a day. I went from doing drugs every night. I mean, every kind of drug you could imagine. I went from drinking every night. When Jesus came into my life, I literally switched. And the only thing that started to be addiction in my life was Tic Tacs. That's it. I mean, all of those things were broken off my life. And God called me to think bigger. He called me to dream bigger. He called me to begin to think that my life could make a difference. Listen, come on. Your life can make a difference. Your life can make a difference. Now listen. Listen to what Isaiah says. He says, do not spare. In the, old, in the New King James, he says, do not spare. Listen, God wants us to learn new ways of doing things. Expanding your influence and your reach or your impact. The reason I changed my name was because I felt like the Lord said, Gary, I want you to go global. I want you to go into these nations. So now I start having conversations with pastors and leaders, leaders who are multimillionaires, billionaires. I just sat with a billionaire the other week and he was, we were talking about doing some things and he said, Gary, I want you to go. I, I want to go into Cambodia with you. I was like, any day. Do you want to pay for the hotel? Because I'm not staying in the hotels you're staying in. <laughs> You know, so like all of a sudden, I was just thinking small, and these guys are now starting to say, hey, come on, enlarge, enlarge. Isaiah says, do not spare. Now listen, this is what it means, do not spare. It means don't withhold, restrain, hold back, or be reserved. Don't hold back. Don't be reserved. Come on, church. Don't be reserved. Well, I'm not used to this kind of atmosphere. <laughs> Don't be reserved. Come on, let's go all out for God. 
Let's give our life. I just turned 56. I know I look younger. But I just turned 56. And I'm telling you, listen, I'm more excited today about serving the Lord and being involved in the kingdom than I've ever been. But listen, don't hold back. Don't be reserved. Now, I'm not saying be weird. I'm just saying don't be reserved. You see, God wants us to be generous people. He wants us to be people who are willing to give our time, our talents, our treasures. We say, hey, I, I've got a gift. Here it is, Lord. I bring it to you today. I want to be involved in whatever you want. Our culture is seeking to influence us. Does anybody experience that? Like our culture is trying to influence us all the time, to hold us back, to, to cause us to be reserved for our love of God, to, to be reserved in our worship, to, to restrain ourselves from speaking up and declaring the truth. Listen, withholding even the gifts that God has given us. Now listen, I'm a minister and I feel that. So if I feel that, I'm sure you're feeling it too, right? Come on, we can't hold back. We can't spare. We've got to push. Every time the enemy says, stop it, you say, no way. I'm not stopping it. I'm moving forward. Every time the enemy says, you're not going to win, yes, I will win. Come on, you've got to have a don't spare kind of attitude. Amen, Gary. Good point. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Listen, if you're new to this place, it's time to get involved. Come on, it's time to unload some of your giftings and maybe get involved. Maybe you're new. I mean, you might be here just a few weeks or maybe a few months. Listen, God's called you to do something with your life. Don't spare. Don't, don't be reserved. Don't hold back. Well, you know, nobody knows. God knows. Come on, God wants to do something. Like, when I got saved, I was a very insecure person. I mean, very insecure. I didn't like people. And then God called me into the ministry. I actually thought I was going to work for the government. Like when I heard God say, go into the ministry, I thought, okay, I'm going to work for the government. I went upstairs and said, Mom, I'm going to work for the government. She goes, what are you talking about? I said, I heard God say, go into the ministry. I knew it wasn't going to be the ministry of education, but I thought ministry of works, ministry of parks. I literally thought that I was going to work for the government. She goes, Gary, you're supposed to go into the ministry. I said, you're out of your mind. <laughs> like, I still wasn't, I was still kind of carnal by then, you know? I just got saved. I said, you're out of your mind. She goes, no, no, you're going to go to Bible college. I said, Mom, I can't even get out of high school. You want me to go to Bible college? I actually applied for Bible college, and they rejected me. But I had a pastor who believed in me. And that pastor literally called the registrar and said, if you don't bring this boy in your school in September, I'm pulling all my money and all my students. The next week, I got a letter saying, congratulations, you've come to Bible college. <laughs> On this condition, you got to graduate from high school before you graduate from high, uh, college. So uh, literally, two months before I graduated from Bible college, I graduated from high school, and then I graduated from Bible college. Now listen. I'm nothing special. I'm just a guy that God said, Gary, I've got a plan for your life. Now listen, God has a plan for every person in this building this morning. He has a plan for those little kids upstairs. Come on, he wants you not to spare. Say, don't spare. Come on, don't spare. Give God everything you have. Don't hold back. I mean, what do you got to lose? Your pain, your suffering, your weaknesses. What do you have to gain? Authority, influence, power, gifts, calling. Don't spare. And then he says this, think big. Come on, say that with me. Think big. You see, God's calling us to think big, dream big. Like God wants to invade our world. Come on, look at me and smile. Think big. You see, you're always going to go in the direction of your most dominant thought. You're always going to go that way. So what are you thinking right now? 
You're always going to go in the most dominant thought. Romans 12, verse 2, it says, Don't copy the behavior and the customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and purpose. I, listen, I talk to people all the time. They want to know God's will. Here's my advice to you. Change your thinking. Change your thinking. Think outside your thinking. Think outside your box. Think outside where you're currently at. Can you believe that God can do something greater than you could ever imagine? Thinking. See, we need to allow our minds to be renewed by the Holy Spirit. If we change our thinking patterns inside, we'll be transformed outside. If we think differently, it'll come out. It'll eventually manifest itself. Proverbs 23, verse 7, it says, As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Come on, church. We've got to stretch our thinking. 80%, 85% of how we live, our life is based on our subconscious. It's like autopilot. Like most of you got up this morning, your first thought was either go to the bathroom or get my coffee. You didn't have to think about it. It's just on autopilot. You just have certain routines you do. Most of you didn't put a GPS today to come to church because you knew how to get here. It was just autopilot. Oh, here we go. You're not thinking about it. It's subconscious. It's all that. But listen, you got to let God go deep into your heart and begin to change how you think about yourself, how you think about your world, how you think about your job, how you think about your family, how you think about your gifts. We've got to replace our thoughts with God's thoughts. All weekend, we've been talking about God's thoughts. We've been talking about accessing God's thoughts and letting our, our heart hear from God. Listen, one word from God can change your destiny. One word can absolutely give you new direction. It can give you purpose. It can absolutely change. One of God's thoughts, if it lands in that brain of yours and that brain of mine, can absolutely Boom, it can change us. It can manifest something incredible in our life. You see, when we, we need to seek, we need to diligently seek to hear and live in his thoughts for our way of life. You can't change from the outside in. You've got to change from the inside Amen. out. Amen. Amen? You know the, the word Egypt. It actually, in the Hebrew, means limitation. So when the children went into Egypt, they went into limitation. It means to be hemmed in. For 400 years, Israel was living a life of limitation. Listen, we need to break limitations off our thinking. Come on, can I hear an amen? You see, Israel came out of Egypt, but they didn't let Egypt get out of them. And they became limited and they they actually lived in a stronghold literally for 40 years. You know the amazing thing? I I, I just been reading Joshua and I came to this place in Joshua where literally um, for 40, 40 years they could not go into the promised land. And as you read the story of the two spies that went to Rahab, Rahab says this statement. I'm going to paraphrase. She says this statement. She goes, from the first day we heard you cross the Red Sea, our hearts melted. I thought about that and I thought, literally, for 40 years, the enemy's hearts were melted. But Israel, because they had limited thinking, they never experienced the breakthrough that God had given, wanted to give them. Like, think about that. I, I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, what are my thinking limit- limitations? What, what, am, what am I not believing for? What, 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 where is my capacity level? Listen, let's make a determination to get out of our comfort zones. Amen, Gary, good point. Hallelujah. To stop making excuses or dwelling on the negative. 
to let go of offenses and live free and clear, to do more with what you have been given. Listen, it doesn't matter. You might say, well, I've only been given this much. The Bible says if you use that, God will give you more. Right? If you use it, God will give you more. If you just say, oh, I don't know. I don't know if I can do it. You'll never get more. Let's let's break free from the status quo. Let's break limitations off our thinking. Let's pursue God with all our heart, with all our soul, with everything that's within us. Let's believe God and his promises over our lives. Because does anybody have a promise? Come on, God's spoken something to you. Come on, let's believe God that God can fulfill that. Let's rise up in faith. So he says, don't spare. He says, think big. And then this is the third thing. He says, believe. This is my interpretation. Believe for big things to take place. Would you say believe for big things to take place? Listen to what he says. You're going to need lots of elbow room for your growing family. You're going to take out over whole nations. Is there anybody in this room? who could believe that the nation of Canada can be saved. That you'd say, hey, our church in Trenton, Ontario, can have an impact from sea to sea. Come on, you got to believe. You got to believe. Like you got to say, hey, God, like we're just, we're maybe what, maybe 150, 200 people. Hey, God, what can we do? Well, with God, you can do anything. With God, all things are possible. I love what John Finocchio says when he says nothing is impossible with God. He says, you never end up with nothing because it's impossible with God. Did you catch that? You never end up with nothing because it's impossible with God. Come on, believe. Listen, enlarge, he says, the place of your tent. Enlarge the place. Stretch out. Listen to these words. They're not my words, they're the Bible words. Enlarge, stretch out, lengthen your cords, strengthen your stakes, for you shall expand. Would you say expand? And your descendants will inherit, say inherit the nations. Come on, God wants you to do some things. In, in other words, this is what Mark 9, 23 says. It says this, Jesus said, If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. If you can believe. All things are possible. This is much harder than it looks. There we go. In other words, our new possibilities are determined by our capacity to believe. If only we believe the promises of God. If I can believe it, listen, it becomes possible for me. If I believe... If I be- Listen, right now, I'm believing God for some big things. I'm asking God, Lord, I need you to expand me. I need you to expand my thinking. Because what I have found is this. Uh, recently, a couple of years ago, uh, I had a business friend say, Gary, I need you to draft up something regarding your ministry and what your plans are for the next five years. And I want you to kind of put all the numbers in and, you know, do a business plan kind of th- idea. So I thought, well, I'm not used to that doing that stuff, but it was a great exercise. It stretched me. And so I did it. I did it. I put it out there. I said, this is how much we need. And this is how much, uh, these are the steps, step A, step B, step C. And uh, then I presented it and nothing happened. Nobody Nobody did anything. Nobody gave me anything. It was kind of one of those exercises. But you know what happened? And I determined, I'm never doing that again. Like, I determined, I'm not going to do that and present it to anybody. I'm just going to do it for myself and not worry about it. Well, listen, in the last two years since I did that, everything that I put on that paper has come to pass. Everything. And and listen, nobody did it. It was God's doing. But what it taught me was, if I can believe, God can do the miraculous. God is a miracle-working God. Come on, does anybody need a miracle this morning? You see, when we need, listen, to renew our mind by the Word of God, to the possibilities that he's created for us. The Bible says that he's actually created things that you haven't yet walked into. Did you hear that? 
You're about, listen, you're, it, let, let's just, let's use this bucket because there's, we'll just do this. Okay. That's all the possibility. That's all the miracles. That's your influence. There's maybe some new things, new territory that God has. And you're here. Now listen, if you're not believing for it, you're not looking for it, you can walk right by it. But if you're declaring it, if you're believing it, all of a sudden you're looking for it. You're, pour, you're pouring into your life. You're thinking about it. It's expanding and all of a sudden, whoo, hey, there's a 50 in there. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God says he's got things prepared for you that you can walk into. But you've got to be open to believe, to not hold back, to think differently. Come on, can I hear an amen? amen. Listen, Ephesians 2, if you, just, just, just so we have a context. Verse 10 says, For we are his workmanship, created in Jesus, for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. We're created to walk in some things. What does God want you to do? Here, last thing. Okay, last thing I want to give you, and then we'll, we'll minister to some people. So, he says, don't spare. So don't, don't hold back. Come on, church, don't hold back. Number two, think big. Number three, believe. And here's number four. Build deep. Listen, build deep. Listen to what he says. Drive the tent pegs deep. The Bible says in Psalm 42, verse 7, it says, Deep calls to deep in the roar of your waterfalls. All your water and breaker has, has swept over me. In other words, you got to build your life around the things that matter. And what I found is, as long as I have built my life and I've gone deep into the soil of the house of God, into the things of God, God has given me the opportunity to do other things. God has opened doors for me to do things that I could never imagine. But because I went deep, I went deep. Listen, unless the Lord, Psalm 127, verse 1, unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchmen stay awake. I want to just say this. Would you go deep in your relationship with God? Like you might be new here. Go deep. I mean, just say, God, I want to get to know you. Just like we taught this weekend about hearing the voice of God, that God is always speaking. And he wants to speak into your heart. He wants to talk to you. You know, he wants to walk with you. We used to sing that song. Um, uh, he walks with me and he talks with me along life's narrow way. Okay, everyone that knew that, you're as old as me. Okay. You know, it's an old hymn. And, and it's this idea of just walking with God every day. Would you, would you commit? Listen, we're just starting the year. We're just into like the first couple weeks of February. It's just getting going here. We're just getting out of the freeze of last week, you know, the, whole, the rain and stuff. Most of us have been incubating for a few days. But listen, let's commit this year. I'm going to go deeper with God. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really go deep. I'm going to spend more time with God. I'm going to listen to more worship music. I'm going to turn the video games off. Sorry, but guys, we've got to turn the video games off. And maybe I, maybe I won't watch Netflix as much. Maybe, maybe I'll, I won't watch my favorite programs as much. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll spend a little bit more time with God. You know that since I started traveling, I used to golf when I, when I worked at the church. I used to golf once a week. And, um, you know, I, if I was blessed, I would go golfing twice a week. You know that since I traveled, I've golfed three times in four and a half years. I loved golf. I, had, I was good at golf. I got a hole in one just before I stopped golfing. So I guess maybe that's God saying, okay, bud. You got your goal, goal hole in one. God bless you now. You're going to do something else. Listen, I don't miss it at all. Honestly, I don't miss it. I, I, I don't ever, I haven't watched a golf game in years. Let's, let's go deeper. Come on, church. Come on, don't spare. Come on, think big. Believe that God has things in store for you 
And then let's build deep. Let's go deep. Listen, go deep in our relationship with God. And how about go deep in our relationship with others? Let's be known as a church that has deep friendships, deep relationships. People can be counted on. People can be, are, are, are loving each other. It's not just the pastor's responsibility or the elder's responsibility, but it's all our responsibility. We, we have a slogan. We had a slogan in our home, um, and my dad proved it one time. We have this slogan, if you hit one of us, you hit us all. I remember some girl or guy came to my door, and they knocked on the door, and they said, where's my brother, Mike? Said, we want Mike out here. We're, we want a Mike, you know, so I, whatever my brother was getting into. So my dad said, you, come on with me. So Mike, myself, and my dad walk out. And there's like five or six people. So my dad walks out and says, okay, who is it? Now, now I'm not saying you should do this, but it was just a philosophy at our house, you know. He goes, who is it? He goes, you? Okay, Mike, go for him. And, and then these two girls, my dad grabbed their backs and just said, you sit here, right here. Don't move. And he, and he said, Gary, you deal with these two. And I said, don't move. And he said, now go. And, and this was back in the 80s, okay? We don't do this today. But, uh, I mean, they just had it out. And then my dad said to, to both of them, are you done? They said, yeah. He said, okay, see you later. Off you go. And he said, you stay there. Like one of the girls and guys wanted to try to get in. He said, no, stop right there. You, you hit one, you hit us all. You want to deal with me? I mean, that was just the, the way it happened. I'm not saying it's right. But listen, that mentality, I think, has to be somewhat in the church. Hey, the devil's attacking one of us. Come on. That ain't going to happen. Not on our watch. That's not, that's not going to happen. Hey, you're speaking, about, you're speaking about my brother? That's not going to happen. We don't do that here. Come on. We're, we're people of faith. We say, hey, you know, you hit one of us, you hit us all. Come on, you hit one of us, you hit us all. And, I, and listen, I'm not advocating violence, please. You know, it, I, I'm, What I'm saying is, is that there's a community of God where God dwells, where we as believers, we love one another in such a way that we hold and have each other's backs. That we believe in each other. We want to pray for each other. We want to believe for each other. If there's someone who's struggling, we're there to help them. We're, because our relationship with God is deep, our relationship with others is deep. Listen to what Paul says. He says, Oh, dear Corinthians, listen to the language. Oh, dear Corinthians, we have spoken honestly with you. Our hearts are open to you. There's no lack of love on our part, but you have withheld your love from us. Paul was like, hey, I love you. I've opened my heart to you. Come on, let's be people who open our hearts to one another. Amen? So don't spare. Where, where are you withholding right now? Don't withhold. Be all in. Amen. Be all in, guys. And, and then, listen, think differently. I, I'm, I'm still working through this. There are times when my thinking gets limited. Where my thinking gets limited. And God says, okay, I'm going to blow your minds today. I'm going to stretch you. I just had this this week. I was telling Paul, I just had this this week. I was sitting with a, a businessman, and he says, I have to ask you a question. I said, sure, you know, go ahead. And he goes, I, I have a problem. I need you to help. I said, okay. So he goes, I have a piece of property that's worth $4 billion U.S. And he said, if I build on it, it'll be worth more. He said, but I could sell it right now for $2 billion. What do you think? And I just smiled at him, but in my mind, I was like, I'm not thinking anything like that. I have never thought about that at all. And immediately, I felt like the Lord said, okay, I've got to enlarge your thinking. I've got to enlarge your thinking because these are the people I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm bringing you into. And you've got to start thinking in terms of how to bring answers and solutions and how, how to make an impact. Listen, think 
Now, I'm not talking double size your lunch today. <laughs> it's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about your thinking, church. Hey, we need to expand. We need to go maybe even to two services. I have a friend right now, when I met him, his church was 400 people, maybe 350. They were in a rundown building. He said, we're going to build this building. They built the building for 600, I think it was. Within four months, they had gone to two services. Now they're in their third service. They had to build a balcony on it. And now they're up to 1,400. And he says, we're trying to decide if we need to buy land. They just built their building like three years ago. And now they're up to 1,400 in a town of probably 14,000. So here's the question. What's the size of Trenton? 17,000. Listen, 17,000. Can you believe God for 10%? Yes. Yes. Amen. Do the math. What's 10%? You asked me to come. I'm leaving tonight. See, I, I know right now all your minds are going. <laughs> What's he saying? Are you out of your mind? No, I'm asking you to think big. I'm asking you to believe that there's 1,700 people who need Jesus. There's 1,700 people who need the Lord. Who want need the impact of the Holy Spirit in their life. Now, it's going to take some people who have a letting God just Stretch them. I've watched my friend. I mean, he is stretched. He is stretched. He calls me all the time and he goes, I'm stretched. I said, how you doing? He goes, I'm loving it, but I'm stretched. Come on, you got to think big. Business people here. Your business might be in a, in a place right now where you're, you're wondering, hey, are we going to pay the bills? Or, you know, what about this? Hey, maybe God wants to give you a new idea, a new thought that, it, that causes you to expand. All of a sudden, that one little thing that w evaded you, all of a sudden you step into it because God had prepared it already. And you're stepping into it because you're believing. You're not settling. You're not saying, no, we're not going to go for it. You're not sparing. All right. I've said enough. Is that good? Yes. Come on. Don't spare. Think big. Believe. Come on. God wants to take off limitations right now. Listen, the way of the kingdom is this. It says this in John 1, 12. It says, to those who receive and believe in his name, he gives the authority to become the children of God. So my job is to receive and believe. That's a different version. I don't like that version. Go to NIV, I think it is. Oh, you don't have NIV. Go to the NLT. I think that's, that's a good version. But believe and receive, he gives the right. The right, right word right there means authority. God wants to give you authority. He wants to give you the authority to step into places where the enemies held you back. He wants to give you authority to believe him for bigger things. Let's pray. If you could close your eyes. Bow your heads. Father, I just thank you for this great church. I thank you for this great team. I thank you for this great weekend. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would do a work of your spirit right now. Lord, that you would cause us to not spare, to say, Lord, I'm all in. 
I, I'm all in. I, 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 I've been living on the sidelines too long. I've been, I've been thinking wrong. I, I, my thinking is limited. Lord, I believe. I, I, I believe that you are going to do miracles for our family. You're going to do miracles for our church. You're going to do miracles for our business. You're going to do miracles for our community. Holy Spirit, we just thank you. And Lord, we say, Lord, help us to go deep in our walk with you. Go deep in our relationships. Lord, we want to believe for whatever that percentage may be. If it's 10%, God, we believe it. Lord, we, we hunger for it. That there would be people who would come into the house of God. Just thank you, Father. With every head bowed, every eye closed. If you're here today, I don't know who's here, but maybe you've never invited Jesus into your heart. And uh, you've been coming for a while. If you're here today, I do this every week, everywhere I go, and I just want to give you an opportunity. If you're here today and you've never invited Jesus, and you'd say, Gary, I need Jesus in my heart. That's the first step. Would you put up your hand quickly? I want to pray for you. I want to give you an opportunity. Anybody here? It's all right. If, you're, if there's nobody, that's okay. But if you're here today and you've never invited Jesus, I want to give you an opportunity. All right, let's just pray. How many would say something within this message struck a chord with you? All right, listen, just quickly stand to your feet. I want to pray for you. I want to pray that God would just blow over us today by the Holy Spirit and that there would be a fresh touch. Come on, a fresh touch. That this week would be a, 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 a marked change in our thinking, a marked change in the way we do things. Amen. So Father, I pray for every person, every member, every person attending today, Lord, that's standing. Lord, right now we ask, let this be a week of change. Let it be a week of new thinking. Let it be a week of breaking off limitations. Let it be a week of new beliefs. Let it be a week of going deeper in you, God, deeper in relationships. Lord, we pray, Lord, that there be no more sparing, no more holding back. We would go forward in the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, that this week would be a marked week where testimonies, miracles would begin to happen. Lord, uh, businesses would begin to prosper. Lord, people would be get, getting saved. Lord, this week, let it be a miracle week, we ask. In Jesus' precious name, amen.